Hello and welcome to Theatre Reviews with Paul Salmon. I'm here at the National Theatre to see The Effect. The Effect was first performed over ten years ago in the National Theatre's smallest auditorium, where it was well reviewed. Since then, of course, its author, Lucy Preble, has received global acclaim as a writer for the uh, TV series Succession, as well as I Hate Susie. Now it's back and given pride of place in the National's large Littleton Theatre. However, despite one massive star performance, this revival of the effect is disappointing. Keep watching and I'll tell you why. And what I thought of the acting of Papa Estiadu, Taylor Russell, Michelle Austin and Cobner Holbrook-Smith. But first, please, like, comment and subscribe. Thank you. This new production of Lucy Preble's The Effect is presented in the cavernous Littleton Theatre. And that's problem number one. Everything about this play says intimate. Uh, there are only four characters, two of whom are taking part in the trial of a drug, uh, two of whom are the supervising doctors. And it pretty much all takes place in the confines of a clinic. I must say it's the first time I've ever thought that a play at the National will look better in close-up on NT Live. I assume it's the idea of director Jamie Lloyd to reconstruct the auditorium into a traverse configuration. So you have a massive bank of stalls seating in what would be the back of the stage, uh, facing the usual, albeit reduced, stalls and the circle, with the stage brought forward so both sides have equal weight. It is a good way to try to bring the audience closer to the action and restore some of that lost intimacy. But it wasn't enough for me, because this is still a huge space with around 900 ticket buyers. Like Theatre in the Round, a traverse stage demands minimal props. Uh, don't get me started about how the sink and bed blocked views during Brokeback Mountain at Soho Place. In this production, there is, properly, an empty platform with a chair at each end. Any physical representation of a clinic is replaced in Sutra Gilmore's attractive set by varying uplit rectangular sections to indicate different scenes. It's still clinical, but in more of a sci-fi film way. Um, yet this is not a futuristic play. It's very much about today's world, our reliance on medicine and what being human means. So this entire setting has the effect, sorry, no pun intended, of making us, the audience, feel like clinicians looking dispassionately at an experiment. Well, that might be the intention, but if it is, it undermines the strength of the play, which is the way it draws us into the feelings of the characters. Feelings which basically wreck the clinical trial. There is superb music from uh, Mikey J. Asante, which helps ratchet up the tension and release the euphoria. Beyond that, everything hinges on the actors. And they do well, but it's a lot to ask of them to provide an intimate performance in a vast auditorium. Inevitably, their mic does, as is usually the case in these situations, to amplify their voices. So at least they sound natural rather than strained, but it's also a reminder that they're playing to a large crowd. Lucy Preble's dialogue is not only snappy and funny and sad, but extraordinarily natural. A gift to the actors. Now, this is the story. A man and a woman are taking part in a four-week trial of a new antidepressant drug and uh, the trial is about the effect it has on the brains of healthy volunteers. I don't speak as an expert, but my understanding is that antidepressants rely on raising dopamine levels, uh, the chemical in the brain that makes us feel good. So when two participants fall in love, we ask ourselves, just as the doctors do, is it really love or just the effect of the drug? And that inevitably leads us to question, what is love? Well, we do eventually get some answers as we go beyond the end of the trial, but I'll say no more about that because I don't want to spoil how this marvellously written play pans out. Papa Esiodou is the man, Tristan. His performance cements his position as one of the top actors of the new generation. Uh, this uh, experienced actor plays a seasoned participant in scientific tests, uh, which he does for the payments and doesn't take too seriously. When he falls in love, he's puzzled and <laughs> deliriously happy, but sceptical that chemicals are playing a part. 
Tris is an East London boy, fast talking and edgy. He constantly jigs up and down and he gets the funniest lines as he pushes boundaries or steps with both feet into delicate situations. It's a bravura performance, full of complexity and authenticity. The woman he meets, Connie, is a psychology student who gets involved in the trial for the first time out of what you might call professional and possibly personal interest. Uh, she's serious-minded, knows a lot about the way the tests are conducted and believes in the effect of chemicals on the brain. She finds Tris amusing and intriguing, but also a bit irritating. And just as Connie is new to being a participant in scientific trials, the part is played by a newcomer to the stage, Taylor Russell. So there's a parallel here between the experience of the characters and of the people playing them. I don't know if this affected the dynamics between them as actors, but they're certainly believable as a couple. Uh, there's a series of rapid short scenes in which they escape the clinic and play games with each other and explore each other's bodies with laughter and euphoria that left me as giddy as them. There are twists and misdirections that make us, the audience, constantly reassess this relationship and uh, the question of how much is the result of the dopamine they're being fed and how much, if you like, comes from the dopamine they're producing naturally. In the same way, we're asked to consider whether depression is biological or psychological. It's a debate that concerns the two doctors, uh, Dr Lorna James, who is supervising the test, and Dr Toby Seeley, who is supervising her. Just to complicate matters further, it turns out that they have had a relationship in the past. Toby, in an authoritative performance by Cobner Holbrook-Smith, is totally committed to the idea that depression can be cured by pharmaceuticals. And at one point he's seen giving a well-rehearsed, rather smug lecture on the subject. But Dr Lorna James is not so sure. It emerges that she herself suffers from depression and in one of the most powerful scenes in the play she talks about the parts of her brain and what function they have. There's my impulse to kill myself, here's my controlling that impulse. Michelle Austin delivers most of her lines with the flat monotone of someone suffering from depression. The two doctors discuss the effects of the drug but, like the participants and any human being, they have their opinions, their experience and their secrets that influence what happens. So it seems Lucy Preble is saying there's no possibility of a truly objective trial, despite the use of placebos and bias testing. And she really piles it on to make the point. Now in a confined space, I suspect we would be carried along by the character's passion. But standing back, as it were, in the arm's length environment of the Littleton, while I for one was wondering how these people ever got to be on the trial or supervising it in the first place. So the nature of depression is one thread running through the play as it questions how much our brain makes us what we are and how much our behaviour influences our brain. But the more dominant thread is about the nature of love. Why do we fall in love? Why do we sacrifice for love? Why does it last long after the initial dopamine infatuation fades? In her convincing story of Triss and Connie, Lucy Preble covers a lot of ground and establishes that in a world in which medical science may sometimes seem to have all the answers, love remains one of life's mysteries. I give the effect at the National Theatre three stars. I hope you enjoyed this review and found it useful. If you did, please like, comment and subscribe to this channel. Then you'll be the first to know about my future reviews. And if you want to read them, go to theatre.reviews. You can also follow me on Threads, X, Mastodon, Instagram and Facebook. Thank you for watching.